Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. I hope you all are very well caffeinated. We have a bunch of exciting content for you in this session. So let's start with introductions first. My name is Avanti Sane, and I'm a product manager in the Google Cloud AI group. And I have with me two amazing guest speakers today who represent some very cool industries. And they will be talking about how they are using our image and video gen AI capabilities to power their businesses. So let's spend a moment chatting briefly about why image and video content is more powerful than textual content. And the answer is very simple. It's because 80% uh, of human learning happens visually, and 65% of us are primarily visual learners. In fact, uh, the human brain takes about 13 milliseconds to process an image, uh, which is about 60,000 times faster than text. And this is validated by what we see in the world today, right? Look at the sheer number of images and videos on the internet. So here are some fun facts. Uh, video has a 92% reach for the worldwide audience. And 3.2 billion images are shared almost daily. And you as enterprises feel this effect, right? Whether it's in how you're communicating with your employees or the impact it's having on your customers. So at Google Cloud, we understand this and we started exploring how image and video generation cap capabilities could help be a game changer for your business. So keeping that in mind, the first product we recently announced was Imagine on Vertex AI. This is our enterprise class image generation and understanding solution. For this session, we will be focusing more on the uh, understanding, uh, understanding part, which is basically two features, image captioning and image Q&A. Let's start with image or visual captioning. So what does it do? It's very simple. You give it an image uh, and it creates a text caption for it. So on the right, there's a really good example for retailers or e-commerce. So let's say uh, today for retail or e-commerce, one of the biggest challenges is having accurate product descriptions. They have millions of products they have to deal with and typically they have very less information to work with. So usually it is some small description a, a human hurriedly typed up or they'll have maybe a pack of photos, uh, a product ID, and uh, maybe like a very small description. So with this, using an API, and you, know, and you need no prior knowledge of AI ML, or uh, uh, models, or fine tuning, or any of that, it's a simple API call, you could very quickly build out a very rich product catalog. There are some other use cases also captioning can help with. So one, of course, is social. Uh, when you look, there's a lot of, images that go out in your social media marketing and you may want captions uh, for it, which you can use to drive hashtags, for example. You can also use it for any kind of auto tagging or categorization, now that you know what the image is actually about. And then of course, uh, accessibility. It makes it more accessible for all human beings. So let's look at a demo. These are the two images I will be using in the demo. And just by the way, they were created on Imagine. Right. So if you go to a generative uh, studio, you should, have a you should have a tab called caption, and you can go there and you can upload an image. Now this image does not have to be generated specifically by Imagine, it could be any image you have. On the right, we have some parameters, so you can choose the number of captions and you, can uh, you have a choice of five languages. So let go let's go ahead and generate the caption. There you go, pretty accurate, huh? Let's try another image and let's try different uh, parameters this time. So let's go with the sushi one I showed earlier. Let's choose three captions and let's go with French. So the latency should be about 20 to 30 seconds. And there you go. Anybody who speaks and reads French and can confirm? <laughs> I did confirm with a French colleague, so I, so I think we're good. So that was image captioning for you. Let's move on to image Q&A. So this is again very simple. You can upload any image. Again, it does not have to be generated by us. And you can ask a question about the image. So for example, on the right, uh, you could use this, let's say if you were the government and you wanted to make a tourism app for disabled folks, this would be a great way 
uh, in which they could navigate people, processes, objects, ask questions about it and make their way. Now, when it comes to uh, visual Q&A, there are some other great uh, use cases for it. So number one, if you have any in-store experiences, so you may have kiosks and touch screens, you may want uh, uh, your customers to be able to interact with your products better. And even if you don't have in-store experiences, you may want to be able to enable that on your digital websites. So great way to capture Q&A uh, impact. So let's look at this demo again. So the sample image is on the right. Again, in a generative AI studio, you have a tab called Visual Q&A where you can go and upload an image. So let's start by asking a question. Again, you have parameters like number of captions, and right now we only support English for this feature, but we will have multiple, support, uh, multiple language support coming soon. So let's start with a question where we try to see whether it generally knows what's happening in this image. Yeah, it got it right. There's, there's recording going on. Now let's see how well it does with counting. Right, there you go. Now let's see if we ask a specific question of, about an object in the image. So let's ask them what the man is wearing. It got that right. Now let me ask a higher level semantic question, like say, hey, what's the vibe in the room, for example? Casual. So it is kind of getting a feeling of the image and is able to answer that very well. So that was visual Q&A. Now let's move on to video description. So the two features I talked about are more on the uh, image. Now this will be about video. So video description in Vertex AI is a feature with which customers can get semantic understanding of a video uh, in the form of text. Now the thing to remember is this is not video summarization where you start to lose information for longer videos. And this is not speech to text or closed captioning where the model focuses on listening to the video to make sense of it. In video description, the model is seeing what's happening in the video to make sense of it. Now, this will become clearer in some of the examples I have. So let's take an example on the right. So today, when you go to any video platform, right, when you type in a search, like in this case, a car chase, typically the videos that come up will either have car chase in the title or in the movie description. But with video description, now it will also show videos which don't have that term in the title or the description, but may actually have a scene of a car chase in it. So this is very powerful from a relevancy perspective. It does two things. So as an end user, when you search, it creates more meaningful content and meaningful searches for you. And from a platform builder perspective, now you can kind of uh, cross sell more of your video content and surface more and more of it. So it's a win-win. There's some other great use cases video description helps unlock. So one of them is, of course, metadata. Now that you have such detailed information about the video, of course, you have richer metadata, which you can use to power you know, better recommendation engines or searches. Another one is automated captions, similar to the one we saw earlier with uh, images. So if you have short form videos like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, you can caption those. Uh, accessibility, you saw the tourism app uh, example earlier. And uh, the next one is understanding and searching important moments. So this is a really cool one. So for an entire video, if you had this detailed rendering uh, in the form of text, now you could do something with it. So now that I have the text format, I could search for important terms in it. So for example, let's imagine we have a six hour baseball game video, right? And we have its rendering. Now I could search for terms like home run, strike, audience cheering, and then it, once I have those moments, I can stitch them together into, say, a highlight reel. So you see how that really helps you uh, understand your information and even change it into different formats. Another great one, of course, would be uh, um, alerts or workflow-based uh, actions. So for example, um, let's take a surveillance video. You could set up alerts saying, hey, anytime a word, the word knife shows up or, the, or gun shows up or people running shows up, you can inform the local police authorities. 
So this is a very powerful way in which you can connect it to some other action. Then there's um, a better ad placement, of course. Now that you know what the video is about, you can insert more relevant ads. So if I have a video of baking cookies, I can insert an ad for milk. The next one is driving deeper video analytics. This is a super cool one. So typically anybody, any organization who deals with videos and has a large amount of videos is always very curious to track how those videos are being used by users. Uh, so for example, let's take drop-off point, which typically most customers will measure. So today when you do a drop-off point, all you understand is the user stopped watching the video at let's say one minute and 29 seconds. But what if now you could cross-reference that with what was happening at one minute, 29 seconds? Now you've got an insight about what the user likes or does not like, and this can drive powerful personalization. And then finally, some of you might be sitting on reels and reels of legacy video content and with no understanding of how you're gonna figure it out, right? So with video description, you could catalog it, which could lead you to, I don't know, discover golden nuggets from the past or repurpose your content. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of value we can get from video descriptions. Let's see a quick demo again. So similarly, same studio. Now we have a tab called video description. You go ahead and select your video. Again, for the two minute video, it's about 20 to 30 seconds latency. And there you go. For every 15 second chunk, it gives you a description. And in the UI experience, you can actually click on the timestamp and go to that portion of the video so you can get, you understand the relevancy and you maintain context. You can save this as a JSON file. And by the way, all the three features I talked about today all have API support right out of the box. Okay, so, oops. So that was the demo. So we talked about three features here and I talked about different use cases for all of them and you could you see how beneficial those could be. But honestly, their true power really comes together when you use them in partnership with each other. So I have a hypothetical case study here uh, through which I would like to demo that. So let's suppose we, we are a real estate company called Symbol, right? And uh, you know, as in, in any industry, we are trying to stay relevant with the times, we try to stay updated, we try to uh, stay relevant to our customers. However, like any industry, we struggle with some headwinds. So let's pick three here. So one of the biggest pain points in real estate is lack of inventory. Now, of course, this could be because there's just not enough homes on the market but it could also be because you're just not fast enough in creating listings, which is a pretty detailed process. You'll keep to sit down and think about it and create that. The second one is long buying cycles. Obviously, people are spending huge amounts of money when it comes to real estate. So they want to be very careful. They do a lot of due diligence. And so what that means for you is longer lead times and maybe low conversion rates. The third one is stiff competition. So for our buyers and sellers, now there are newer models of transacting property. And uh, so there's always new businesses popping up. How do you create revenue with all of this going on? So let's see how a combination of the features I discussed earlier can help with some of these. So first one, lack of inventory. What if we provided a capability for our real estate agents where either using a mobile experience or a website experience, all they had to do was take pictures and video of a house and then it auto creates a listing for it which includes a beautiful description, and it also extracts information. So like things like, hey, hardwood floors, pool, HVAC, what have you, because that's what's being used by your um, uh, end users when they search for houses. And it creates all of that in absolute seconds. The good thing is, as an API developer, it will be easy for them to set this up, that's one. And then it also, from an end user perspective, so the buyers or the renters, when they're searching, they can do more open-ended searches. Like today when you uh, go to any real estate uh, site and try to narrow down your search, it's like a lot of selecting a lot of filters, right? But here I could maybe even put in a search saying, hey, show me a house which has hardwood floors in the living room and carpet everywhere else and a pool in the backyard. So it creates a customer delight experience just because you have that much knowledge about your content. Let's look at the next challenge, long buying cycles. So like I mentioned earlier, typically that's because most people want to do a lot of due diligence, which means they will make multiple visits to the property, check it out again and again, and that is what creates the longest lead time. What if you could provide this information maybe in a 
website or a mobile app where they could ask questions on their own time as required. Um, and so that will reduce the time they spend on evaluating it. You can also flip this feature along. So now that you have this information, you could use it for sellers. When they list their house, you say, hey, we noticed there's mold in this part or there are some tiles missing on the roof. So they can get ahead of it and do those improvements before they run it, into it during the buying cycle. So again, shaving off valuable uh, moments of time from the, uh, from the lead time. And then of course, more inclusivity, that's always a plus. Third one, so stiff competition. So we probably cannot stop other businesses popping up, but what we could do is we could create either product differentiation or even launch new streams of revenue. So in this example, one way we could do that is because we have all of this information about the house and its condition and its state, and so to help that drive the value of the house, we could provide e-appraisal services, for example. Some other use cases we could use this is for, uh, with the Q&A chatbot I showed earlier, maybe now you have online agents who are available all the time to answer your questions, you know, whenever the user wants it to. And then finally, you have information about your customers, what they want. You have information about the houses with images and videos. You could create personalized brochures. So that creates product differentiation. And again, customer delight. So to summarize, using the three features I described above, which were image captioning, image Q&A, and video description, and especially using them together, you can save immense time and effort in understanding the content you already have. That's one. Once you know you have that information, it will help you get deeper understanding and insight of not only the content, but also how your customers are interacting with them. And then number three, all of this together, you could create new revenue generation uh, streams or create product differentiation. So with that, it comes to, uh, I come to the end of my part of the session. Uh, we've talked a lot about hypotheticals, but I think we should talk more about real life cust uh, customers who are using this in their businesses. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Tommaso, who uh, will share a little bit about how they are using these features to drive more personalization. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Avanti. Thanks for the beautiful information that you shared with us about Vertex AI, image description and video description. So I'm Tommaso Vaccarella. I'm the general manager and co-founder of Connected Stories. Uh, and today, guys, I'm going to walk you through a real, a real life enterprise use case of how we use image description and video description within our platform. Uh, what is our platform? Uh, uh, Connected Stories uh, essentially solves for uh, building, personalizing, uh, um, optimizing, uh, optimizing advertising creative at scale by combining the power of creative with generative AI to essentially remove the complexity and therefore democratizing access to the driven creative. So why personalizing creative is important? Essentially, media marketers have only focused on optimizing target and optimizing inventory, whereas the majority of success of a campaign actually runs through and is derived by the effectiveness of our creative. So therefore, coming up with effective creative is key in order to have uh, successful marketing and advertising campaigns. However, in order to do so, personalization and continuous optimizations are actually key elements in order to enable that sort of effectiveness. But in order to fully harness the power of personalization and uh, uh, being able to continuously optimize such creative, uh, understanding and measuring creative become key ingredients to success. So that's why when we launched Connected Stories uh, since day one, we wanted to utilize AI across all the different three modules that you see up here on the platform. So the one on the left is actually our Creative Studio, which is generative AI powered. It's a, a multi-tenant solution that allows content uh, uh, to be brought um, to life uh, through the use of uh, a canvas-like interface for content creators to mix uh, um, content that are generated by, um, by generative AI through the integration of Palm and uh, Image and within the platform, as well as interactive widgets uh, to which we can give um, data-driven conditions on and therefore applying them in real time, which is then orchestrated by our AI-based decisioning system that uses uh, uh, custom uh, machine learning models uh, that are trained with our own data, uh, real-time signals, uh, as well as first-party data of the clients. And this essentially acts as the orchestrator 
that selects the different variations uh, that JGAI Power Studio comes up with. And finally, everything is then measured uh, in terms of effectiveness through our creative intelligence dashboards. Uh, they're using, for example, Vision AI to understand uh, very granularly how users are interacting with the different pieces of, uh, of the content that they're exposed to. So this brings me to the use of now image description. Actually, yesterday on, on this stage, we launched a new component of uh, uh, our platform called Genasans. It's our brand new creative studio and essentially allows for a new chat-like interface to help uh, as a co-pilot content creators uh, to um, strategize campaigns uh, starting from a campaign brief. So campaign brief contains uh, not only obviously text, but also images and, uh, and videos. So those images and videos uh, are now through image description and video description can be synthesized obviously into, into text and described into text, allowing therefore our um, new chatbot like, which is called uh, uh, Leo, uh, short for Leonardo da Vinci, um, to then orchestrate all the different prompts that are then uh, um, utilized within the creative studio to come up with uh, the more personalized creatives. So this has become something that was uh, impossible for us to do before, especially manually, which now through the use of image and video description, we can now do. So this in turn allows to create much more and much better variations of the personalized creatives uh, that our creative studio comes up with. So even in this case, uh, we are able to actually utilize uh, Vertex AI's APIs uh, in terms of image description and video description to better describe uh, very granularly what users are being exposed to and therefore the content of each single personalized creative, which are then extremely helpful for us to come up with recommendation because uh, before we, will, we didn't have the chance necessarily to be able to understand granularly what users were being exposed to, uh, whereas now every single content is better described and therefore it allows us to really um, unpack better insights, which therefore lead to recommendation and better optimization. So this creates uh, an extremely positive uh, feedback loop that starts with the studio, that then um, uh, keeps on going with the AI decisioning system and back to creative intelligence, uh, which is powered um, all uh, with uh, image description and video description underneath, even though, again, you cannot necessarily see it, it's not super tangible, but this leads to a much more scalable process, uh, way less resource intensive, uh, and therefore this essentially summarized in greater information than bring better performance. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Avanti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tommaso. That was amazing. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Bryce Perez, who is uh, speaking, who's a Googler, but he's speaking on behalf of Theta Labs. And they are using some of these features to uh, drive better semantic search and highlight creation. So let's hear from Bryce. Okay, Bryce. Thank you, Avanti. Appreciate it. Wonderful work, Thomas. Uh, well, basically, I'm a cloud engineer, customer engineer for the Web3 team. Um, and I I'm honored to basically be presenting on the behalf of Theta Labs. So shout out to the Theta Labs CEO, Mitch Liu, and CTO, J.E. Long. Along with our team at Google Cloud Web3, we have been working closely together uh, to bring exciting, meaningful applications for video to text AI. Other efforts described today will only scratch the surface on things to come. Today, I want to talk to you about the model pipeline video to text applications. The goal is to set out to accomplish is harnessing the computational power of both cloud and edge nodes. Cloud and distributed edge um, are complementary uh, computing platforms. Cloud has the advantages of offering stability uh, at, cloud, at, at scale and high availability. While the edge is ubiquitous with, with virtually unlimited numbers of nodes, these nodes mainly are less powerful just by themselves, but when aggregated, they can provide massive par parallel processing power while locating uh, more closer to the users. A hybrid computing infrastructure could combine the substantial benefits of both worlds. The Theta Edge Network is one of the leading edge computing platforms. 
The Theta Edge Network provides in-to-end -in infrastructure for decentralized video streaming um, and delivery. The four key advantages of Theta Edge Network are scale, availability, resource, and simple UX. The simple UX allows a non-tech user to simply download the Theta Edge Node software and run it in the background. No active interaction is required. The provided a uh, rich UI experience basically allows for job status to be shown and, and allow you to earn some feedback as well. Here we introduce the concept of model pipeline running on a hybrid platform consisting of Google Cloud and Data Edge Network. A model pipeline allows conducting a task using multiple deep learning models consecutively. So some of these models can be Google proprietary models and there's off, uh, uh, offering uh, accessibility through Google Cloud's API. Others can be open source models that can be served by Theta Edge Network leveraging uh, massive parallel processing power as mentioned. As shown in the diagram that you see, the input data first is transformed into an intermediary representation use cloud hosting models. Then the intermediary data is processed by models hosted in the Edge Network and turned into a final output. Although the diagram only shows two models, the real application task could utilize multiple uh, models as shown in later slides. Now that we have introduced the concept of the pipeline, uh, let's use a couple applications for an example. Basically, we'll utilize the video entertainment industry to illustrate its potential. The first application is semantic video search. Traditionally, video search only allows searching against title, description, and possibly tags. But these descriptions usually typically provide the video uploaders with some poor quality that may not able to capture the full details of the video. With Model Pipeline, we can achieve much better experience. So two images are shown. It depicts the content creator, Alice, uploading videos to a video platform. And after the raw video is processed by the Model Pipeline, a user, Bob, can type in the natural language um, in the, into the search bar for semantic video search. This could be, allow Bob to accurately search interesting moments. Inside the long video, a massive video library is automatically locate the replay position inside these, these typically long videos. For an example, we are in the Bay Area, and by default, for today, we're all going to be Golden State Warrior fans. Is that agreed upon? <laughs> so we're going to query Steph Curry's three-point buzzer uh, that was in the 2018 NBA Finals. This could direct you to exact replay location of the three-point inside the two-hour-long recording of the first game of the Warriors versus Cavaliers in 2018 NBA Finals. How can we implement semantic video search using model pipeline? So the model pipeline for this use case can be consisted of three stages. The video to text capability provided by Google Cloud Model Vita via the Vertex AI or API, API suite. The Vertex AI model takes a raw video spit out a summary of the, uh, each 15 second clips of the video. Next, the LLM runs the, uh, the, on the, in the Theta, Theta Edge network and collects the clip summaries and generate tags and also a high level of detail, but the detail summary is, can be for the entire video as well. The embedding of the tags, clip summaries, and video summary are stored in the vector database hosted by the Edge network. Finally, when the user types in search for, with natural language to embed it, query is computed in real time, which is matched against the summary and other information found in the ve vector database for the best video and the exact replay location for that query. So here's another exact uh, example. So we want to be able to generate an automatic game highlight reel generation. This encompasses not just extracting exciting moments from a video game stream or a, a typical football game stream, but also generate natural language descriptions of the highlight clips. As shown in the figure, a game streamer uploads video and then the system automatically transcribes the penalty kick and the epic goalkeeper save. How can we implement this feature using model pipelines? Similar to the video semantic search we use case, we use the video to text model and the clip summaries and the raw video uploaded by the game streamer. Next, the LLM hosted by the Edge Network can perform a clip sentiment analysis based on when we assign the score of each clip, judges whether the clip has a highlight moment, and then finally, we can feed the raw video in the begin and end time of the clips with top scores, offering it to a FFmpeg software running in the Data Edge network and extract those highlights and combine them into a highlight reel. Furthermore, we can feed the highlight reel back into the Vertex AI model, 
which can create natural language descriptions of the highlight reel, which could be useful for end users and content creators. I hope that what I share with you inspire you to build new ways to cloud with Vertex AI. Bonte, back to you. Thank, thank you, Bryce. So I think with that, we come to the end of the session. I hope you enjoyed it. Please spend a few um, seconds giving us some feedback. So thank you all for coming and listening today. It was a real pleasure talking to you all. Hope you have a great rest of the day. <laughs>